You shouldn't be like just completely discouraged because you lost. That's like a gateway. It's a big gateway for yourself to get better. Hey there, everyone. It's episode 49 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, the only place to hear the best stories from the best martial artists, like today's guest, CJ Cheyenne LaChapelle. I'm the founder here at Whistlekick, but on the show, I'm your host, Jeremy Lesniak. Whistlekick, in case you didn't know, makes the world's best sparring gear and some great apparel and accessories, all of it for traditional martial artists. I'd like to welcome our new listeners and thank all of you returning fans. If you're not familiar with our products, you should check out everything we offer, like our t-shirts. They come in a variety of styles and colors for men, women, and kids. You can learn more about our shirts and all of our other great gear and apparel at whistlekick.com. All of our past episodes, all the show notes for them, and a whole lot more are at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And while you're on our website, go ahead and sign up for our newsletter. We offer exclusive content to subscribers, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests. Now, let's move on to the episode. On episode 49, we're joined by CJ Cheyenne LaChapelle, a Kung Fu practitioner from Massachusetts. CJ LaChapelle was recommended to me by someone who doesn't even do martial arts. Rather, it was a friend that noticed our mutual connection. See, CJ LaChapelle attends the same university I went to, and we even know some of the same people in the central Massachusetts martial arts world. An accomplished competitor, CJ LaChapelle and I talk about everything from her start in Kung Fu to the joy she finds in working with new students. I enjoyed our time together, and I'm sure you'll enjoy this episode. CJ LaChapelle, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Thanks for having me. It's great. It's great to have you on here. As as we already said, you are the first, primarily at least anyway, uh, Chinese stylist that we've had on the show. So that's going to be fun. Maybe we'll get it's some... an honor. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't pick you that way. In fact, um, as as you know, and, and I'll share with everyone, um, we picked you sort of because you and I have something in common. And because of that, you popped up on my radar from one of my non-martial arts friends. So uh, for the listeners who don't know that the the vague thing I'm referencing, I attended Clark University um, some years ago that we won't get into. And C.D. LaChapelle <laughs> is a current student at Clark. And because of that, um, she happened to pop up on a Worcester, Massachusetts newspaper that a friend of mine read and said, hey, I know you've got this show thing going on. You should check her out. So it took a couple months, but we coordinated and now here she is. And bam, go Clark Cougars. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, there's an intro to something that's absolutely not anything to do with martial arts, but of course it's a martial arts show. So let's get into that. How did you get started in the martial arts? All right. So at a very young age, um, exactly three and a half years old. Um, we, uh, grew up in Worcester. I actually grew up behind Clark for a majority of my life. So, um, living in this area and my dad started martial arts also at quite a young age and he's been, he's been moving across everywhere he moves. He like look, always looking for new martial arts schools. And once we moved to Worcester and he started a family and everything with, uh, me and my mother, he found the Kung Fu school that I currently am still practicing at and, uh, he enrolled himself there. So, he started attending and then me and my mother would occasionally we'd um, go in and watch classes most of the time actually pretty often we would go in and watch him and growing up in that environment like the more the older I got the more interested I became like I started to watch a little closer and I would kind of peek my head over and I would slowly creep up closer to the training floor watch closer and closer and then for some reason I started mimicking the movements and like kind of like talking to myself, saying, repeating all the phrases in Cantonese and doing all these, this like little stuff like that. And so my dad's teacher at the time, he looked over and he started to notice me and he was like, you know what, even though she's a little younger than we take them, have her come in and try our little dragons class, which was for like little ones, like about, they usually take them around four or five. That was like the normal age and let her try it out, see if she likes it and sticks with it. And ever since then, I haven't stopped <laughs> so cool yeah yeah you know it's funny a lot of the guests that we've had on the show have had kind of that similar origin story that for whatever reason they were too young at least by the traditional rules at the school that that their parent or sibling was attending and there they were in the back right 
kind of mimicking and then finally somebody says all right come on give it a shot right um, the hidden gem I can think of, right yeah well for 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 all of us i think hopefully um and it's great that you've continued most definitely so that's yeah. so that's that's awesome so we're going to get into a lot more about you and your relationship to the martial arts but let's start it off you know let's jump into the 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 biggie here. Tell us your best martial arts story. Ooh, love that question. There's so many good ones. Like I find like the best things within my martial arts training, just even the littlest things make the biggest impact on me. But if we're going to go shooting for something big, it'll probably be when I um, first got my adult black sash. And I feel like for most martial artists, getting their black sash is a high achievement in their eyes you know and of course there's always some sort of meaning but I felt like it was just more than a black sash test to me there was like all this going on I felt like it was a little extra special for me on my case and but it was a complete surprise that was the thing um because I was started at such a young age and I've been training for so long and by a technical issue like at the point where I should have been got, getting my black sash i was still very young like in maturity wise still like i was still growing so um they actually gave me the rank of junior black which i had to move through those ranks as well before i could get to my adult black sash but when it came to the time to get my adult black sash um my dad's teacher my dad is also my instructor actually <laughs> so his teacher um moved to virginia recently and he was starting to build a school there and like we called it the temple because you know we thought it'd be a pretty cool label to put on that um and uh we call him Seagong by the way so if I ever say Seagong just that's what that's what I refer to as my teacher's teacher mm-hmm. and uh so uh it was um we planned on making a trip down there like as a kung fu school like from the Worcester area we wanted to go down to Virginia and like for the grand opening and bring gifts and we would make a whole big celebration out of it may have some fun go out to eat and train together it'd be awesome and everything and that's what we did we spent a weekend there and um grand opening slash Chinese New Year there was so many people and it was um I think on the Saturday of that weekend, we chose to have the grand celebration where there was lion dancing, performances, demonstrations, and then we followed it with like a training class taught by Missy Gung, where um, at the end of the class, we were demonstrating each other's forms to him so he could kind of check up on us and be sure that our our curriculum's looking clean and nothing's like too funky there. And uh, mind you that I had no clue that I was ranking up until the moment at the closing of the class. So, like, nobody said anything to me. And I was just like, oh, this is a normal training class. So then after we're, like, all lined up and we're about to bow out, and then he announced my name and gave, like, this really moving speech of how he's watched me grow up in the environment of martial arts and all his pride that he has in me and everything. And it was a <laughs> very emotional moment. And then he handed me over the black sash and the certificate that went along with it. And then at that moment, he informed everyone that the black sash he just handed to me was the very first black sash that he ever received too. And that's the one that I was going to be wearing on my waist. And that at that point, I wasn't ready <laughs> for any more surprises, which that made it that much more emotional. And almost everyone in the room began to like get emotional too, and including and especially my father, which is a very rare occurrence. So it was really nice. Wow. And that's a great story. And I can kind of feel like I'm like I'm back there with you. How, how old were you at that point? Ooh, around 12, 13 years old. <sighs> okay. So pretty young. I mean, I, I still think... fairly young for, especially for a Chinese. Yeah. Person, right? Yeah. It was okay. Is, is there some, some difference? I mean, it, uh, a junior black belt around that age, while it's not, I wouldn't call it common, it's certainly not unheard of in most uh, Korean and Japanese martial arts schools. Is it abnormal in Chinese martial arts? Um, the Chinese martial arts, are depending the style, um, things have become a lot more modern these days as well, where like periods of time where it's more so like, uh, isn't, we don't go by amounts of time usually like, oh, um, doesn't matter what point you are in your training three, every three months you get this sash. It would, it's more like, um, it's up to the Sifu himself sure. and he, or like the seniors of the school and they will watch you and be sure and like if you're ready we'll like we kind of of course have like a standard time where we try to set rankings so we can you know keep things organized but whether a specific person ranks up or not is dependent upon the teacher himself and it usually to get let's say if it's an adult started training like um, it would take about 
five to six years to receive a black sash and that's assumed that's like an average person around there but since I started at such an extremely young age so by the time I was 13 I had already been training for three years or 13 sorry 10 years almost so that was like that's twice the amount of time that a normal person would get their black sash but of course like I had all this mental mature like maturity to go through as well as physical and it was like so it just everything had to balance out which that's okay because it just made me a better martial artist so absolutely and there's some elements in my own story that we won't get into but I can certainly empathize with what you went through at that age and, and rank stuff right so <laughs> great so <laughs> So here, you, so here you are. Let's let's go back to it for a moment. Sorry for the detour. Oh, no we take a lot of detours here. <laughs> so there you are. You're you're young and your Sigong. Yes, that the pronunciation has handed over to you his sash. <laughs> so I mean, that's kind of a double whammy, right? So you didn't even know that you were being evaluated for a promotion. Correct. <laughs> and then he hits you with this, and then kind of doubles up and gives you his sash. I mean, <laughs> exactly. He said it very nonchalantly, too, of course. He's a very laid-back, sweet guy, and it was like, he said it very calmly. He was like, oh, and um, just so you know, like, by the way, like, this happens to be the sash that I first received when I got my first black sash, which was forever ago, because this guy has been training since he was a kid too and like he's like a second father figure for me like i love that man he he's like had such a big impact and he's such a good guy and so that like the relationship that we have just like made it like you know of course a little more tears being shed you know <laughs> on yeah. the inside and outside it was so it was just absolutely ridiculous like i couldn't I had nothing to say. I had no words. I was just kind of standing there staring at him and smiling and nodding like, uh-huh. <laughs> sure. But, Where is that sash now? Oh, I still wear it. You still oh, wear yeah. it? Okay. <laughs> and I've, I'm currently a first degree black sash, which is like a kind of like physical difference if I can describe it. If um, the irregular adult black sash is just like the black cloth that you would um, wrap around your waist and then each degree has different colored tassels that is added to the end of the sash. So first degree is the black tassel, second degree is white, third is gold, and so on and so forth. Okay. And so currently, um, so I didn't really didn't want to change my sash. So all I did right. was just, you know, add on with my mother's great sewing skills, she just added on the tassels for me. <laughs> oh, that's so that's so cool. Oh, I dig that story. <laughs> One of my favorites. So Imagine what your life might have been had you not made it out to train at three and a half or if your father had, you know, decided, you know, I'm done with martial arts. I'm going to I'm going to take up bowling or something. What what would your life look like? Who would you be, do you think, <laughs> that's, if you never started training? That's a good question because that's it's very hard to imagine. <laughs> it really yeah. is because it's just like I'm literally – a product of martial arts and a martial arts environment of itself. Like I grew up and raised in, in that environment and like without it, Ooh, definitely wouldn't be the person I am now, like emotionally and socially, that's for sure. <laughs> but um, I am, I was always, no matter what, like a pretty optimistic and active person where I always have to be doing something. Like I, I love trying new things and learning. So I'm sure I would have gotten my hands into some something else of like some sort of recreation but i don't think whatever it was wouldn't have nearly had such a good impact on me as martial arts has so mm -hmm. and you know the, the fun part about that question is everyone struggles with it right it, it's 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 kind of tough and but i like hearing the way that that people wander down that road and 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 imagine themselves. You can hear it. I can hear you imagining what you would be like without martial arts. Yeah. And I can also <laughs> hear you struggling to imagine that. And that's yeah. The cogs are turning. That's the fun. Part. Yeah. Cogs are turning. <laughs> A lot of people. I love um, being one of the seniors at like in my school now. Um, on the higher ranks. It's I love like coming in like coming in and seeing new students come in and grow as their own students as well. And I love seeing them train and their improvement and whenever they ask me questions and they really show intent on wanting to better themselves in the martial arts, whether it's physically or mentally. And I love the fact where if we get to like a relationship or bonding point where we can like 
they share their story with me, like where what they've been doing beforehand or what they're doing now and like how martial arts, I'll, I'll ask them, I'm like, what has Kung Fu done for you? Like has, like what was your reason for joining and has it like done anything good for you? And they're like, and pretty much 99.9% .9 of people always say, I absolutely love it here and I love what we're doing here and what it's done for me and what it's done for the people around me is like nothing I could ever like money could ever buy you know what I mean like and I love hearing that and that's like I'm like this is the reason you know like this is why I'm involved and I want this more people should know about it like more people should be involved like it's just a crazy thing and that's what I love to hear though I agree I, I can I can certainly relate to that I love hearing new students talk about the passion that they're finding in the martial arts and the benefits. Precisely. It's like, oh, you just keep going. It gets better. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> it does get better. It does. It? You always have something else to learn. So we've hit a bunch of high points and only high points right now. But of course, life isn't all high points. So I'd like you to think about a low point, something rough, a tough time that you navigated through and how your martial arts training and experience helped you get to the other side. Yeah, definitely. I can uh, agree to that. We all have something that we gotta we gotta go through, right? But um, it's even though like I am fairly young, and it's like I've had like you no know, real like real big things that have like completely utterly knocked me off down. But there's been like really rough points because I'm in general an optimistic and bubbly person, and low points never like came too often. But of course, there are tragedies that happen in life that we can't control physically or emotionally sure. and that definitely came probably uh, within like a like it all got happened at one time like it was in within a span of a few years from each other um i was maybe around the age of nine or ten when um the only aunt i had on my father's side she had passed away so suddenly mm -hmm. without like any warning at all it was very violently and uh, it was the first real death I had experienced in the family and like what like where I was at the age where I was able to process what was happening and it was rough um that was like I was very close to her she was such a good person beautiful woman and it was even worth because it was like my father's only sibling and he hmm. really like they had such a connection and to see him in an emotional state like that like so severe of grief it was it was really degrading for me emotionally as well and I was learning how to process it and handle it was completely a whole nother story where it's like it's just difficult and I'm sure we've all like we've experienced some sort of loss and we can coincide with sure. it and it was it was hard but then um as I was starting to like get past it and um you know get used to it and everything and starting to like get my groove back and feel better um not long after that um, one of my grandmothers, whom I was dearly close to, passed away as well. So just when I started to recover, then the next death occurred. And so it was like when it felt like everything was like because of me, like I blamed everything on myself, you know, like kind of like that. I'm a very like conscious person. And that emotional state was just for that amount of time. It was like it was ridiculous. Like it was so overwhelming. And I but my martial arts was there. And that's what was my, like, that was my crutch. I could go there, go into the school knowing that, I, like, my dad always had the saying that, like, all of the students still use it now. is <laughs> like, leave your problems at the door. Leave whatever you have that's wrong, whatever is going on that's inside you that you're not sharing. Leave it at the door. And walk in and be, be fresh and new and focus on your training. Focus on what you're doing for yourself and then solve the rest of your problems later, you know? And that's what I did. And it took some time to, like, get over and, like, relieve the stress and the emotions. But without martial arts, I probably it must, would have been much more difficult to get through that, even though my family is completely supportive. But martial arts is, like, the school itself and the people in it and training has, like, helped me, like, a significant amount. Mm. Most definitely. The the loss of a loved one is certainly one of the common answers that's come up to this question. And it's certainly a, a common, I think, for all of us. I mean, I, I'd say it's probably universal that there's something about getting into the school, dojo, whatever you call it, 
and leaving it at the door, you said, as you said, and, and putting your, your heart into your training and realizing that there's a way forward. Precisely. Whatever it is, there's mm -hmm. a way forward. And martial arts can be an example of reminding you that there's a way forward, even if it's in a portion of your life. Precisely that. And it kind of teaches you how to redirect those emotions into something more that beneficial. You know what I mean? Like just taking that energy and moving it in a way, just like when you're moving and practicing kata or forms, it's like you have to redirect your energies in a way where it's correct and something that we get more out of it, you know, and it was just becomes a little more organized when you have that help there with you, you know. Absolutely. And I don't know if that word choice was intentional or not, but I like it. Redirection. <laughs> Such a common theme in the martial arts, isn't it? Oh, of course. <laughs> For a reason, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> so we've heard a little bit about your instructor, your father, and, and his instructor, your Sigong. But other than those two, who would you say the most influential people or person in your martial arts training has been? Well, most likely, and it sound it must sound like something right out of a textbook, but it most definitely is my mother. Like there's okay. like I'm am an only child, so it's like it's me, my mother, and my father, and my dad is my instructor. So he, of course, he has a lot of impact on me there because he's the one who's training me, right? But um, my mother is like never been the type of person to be on the standby and kind of just let me do my thing. Like she does, she she let me be independent and let me train and figure out my groove and be sure that I this is what I wanted, but she always was there to support me and she was always there. She knew my potential. She would sit there and she still watches classes and she watches me train. She's been watching me train since I started. Like she's never just kind of let it happen and be like, all right, I'll see you later. But she's always been there to watch. And so she like knew my potential. She knew what I could do in my limits and she would always push that. And she would help with my dad and them together both pushing my lips and limits and telling me like this is what you have potential for like you can do this and constantly like keeping me like focused too that was the big part it was keeping me focused on be sure that uh knew what i was doing and what i had to do and it was kept me on task which was more than i can ever be thankful for does your mom train she used to um a while ago she used to do tai chi with my my seagong actually went back when we were in worcester he would um she would be do Tai Chi classes with him and she would do it also with my dad. So, okay, yeah. cool. Now you mentioned focus and keeping you focused and testing your limits. Are we, are we stepping into talking about your competition time? Oh, sure. <laughs> okay. Good segue. Right. Good I'm, segue. That's, I'm guessing that that's, that's where, where you were, you were headed and, so let's go there. <laughs> All right. You've, you've spent some time in competition, haven't you? Oh, most of my time. <laughs> okay. Well, tell us about it. Um, Sounds like there's some good in there. Maybe maybe some less than good in there. So let's hear all about it. <laughs> all right. So um, I've been competing since I was five. And I'm, I am still continue to compete when I can, uh, as long as I, the time allots for it. Um, so, wow, since th 2002. That was a long time ago. <laughs> seems like such a long time ago and um the last three or four years i've earned three grand champion titles uh one in the teen girls and two in the women's categories in the the new england international chinese martial arts championship or also known as icmac like icmac mm -hmm. um that is like a pretty big tournament that works nationally like they come they have one in new england they have one in vegas and florida orlando and then they have like the big mamma jamma, the one across all the way across in China that's worlds rather than nationals. And uh, competing is like it's fun. I love it, and it's a, but it's a completely different flavor that like definitely took me a while to get used to. You know, because walking into competition, of course, in the word itself, everyone's competing. You know, like there's not necessarily like sometimes you can. Uh, find yourself communicating with people who are other martial artists where like you're so used to like maybe in your own school like good people martial artists you have like the standard in your mind and sometimes you meet people who are not quite up like to like a, a good standard of like a martial artist you know you meet egos of course you uh 
meet all different kinds of people and you lose and you win and you go through so many different processes and sometimes it can be very overwhelming and that's a big part of competition I feel is like learning how to just have fun that's like the biggest thing is like like I said in the word competition it's like everyone's there to compete and everybody forgets that you should be there just to show off your stuff like you shouldn't be there like you don't want to have like the mindset that you have to win like it's not a necessary thing you're there to represent your martial arts and that's what it should be about and the biggest thing is definitely like of course like everybody's you're not gonna win every time you know and I've had people ask me that all too definitely because they know like if they um, are somewhat educated about like my competition career they ask me like oh have you ever gotten your like excuse the language but have you gotten your happy like they always the biggest number one question it's like and I'm like <laughs> that's a funny way to word it but then I always laugh and I say yes of course I have like I wouldn't be where I am now if you haven't you know there's like there's no way like how are you going to get better without you know losing a few times and I always like losing is like like everyone asks that too they're like oh how do you feel when you lose do you feel like like you let somebody down I'm like no like you shouldn't be like just completely discouraged because you lost that's like a gateway it's a big gateway for yourself to get better that all it is you know that's all it is unless you're like you know some people are just it's just you know ego <laughs> but competition is definitely like that different flavor and it's like I don't stray too far away from like my normal self from within my school it's like everything that I bring to my school and like the good habits I try to put on my dad's students and not my students is like I bring it to competition as well because you should whatever you practice within the school you should definitely apply to outside the school as well including competition and that's actually come like competitions are where we met most of our like sister schools that we call like cousin schools where like we have good friends of like other seafoods and other schools across Massachusetts and even like New England and like we wouldn't have met them if we haven't been to competition. It's like a big family. It's like a big circle. Like you know, martial arts world is a small circle. <laughs> it is. It definitely is. It is, and you know, I think that's a great point. I mean, you you've kind of ticked off all the, I think the wonderful reasons that there are for competing. When people ask me, well, should I compete? Should my child compete? Yeah, they should. And here, here's a list why. And, and I think you right. checked off all the boxes. <laughs> but the one that that really seemed to mean the most to you was meeting new people, that broadening that martial arts family, oh, yeah. that those of us that have competed a fair amount, I mean, you know, you know the feeling just as I do of saying, oh, well, you know, I kind of want to go to this competition because if I don't I won't see so and so and I haven't seen them in a while right precisely like family gatherings like that's how it is exactly. like oh we have our meeting for Christmas and blah 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 is gonna be here I'm like oh man I haven't seen them since last Christmas I should probably go you know so similar to that yeah and I'm like I always say when everyone asks like you said if they ask should my kid compete should I compete I'm like yeah. I'm like yes <laughs> like definitely <laughs> should like of course granted some of the bigger competitions can be like a quite expensive sometimes for the bigger ones um but that's okay because they're always like i love the small in-house tournaments like we that you know like sister schools that they hold like our friends they hold a little tournament in like their own school and it's much less intimidating there's not as many important people watching you and judging you for scoring and everything so i always definitely sure. twice as encouraged for the students to go there, especially for like first times. It's like, you gotta ease yourself in because no matter no matter what people ask me, that's a big thing too, is like, you've been keep competing for so long. Do you still get butterflies? Do you still get nervous, anxiety? I'm like, of course I do, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Like it takes a little while, like after maybe one or two performances, I calm down, but I still get like a little, little anxious, you know? <laughs> like it's like, you know, no matter what, if you got all those eyes in the room looking at you and like expectations and such things like that, you still get nervous. But I end up like going into a completely different state when I perform and I like kind of zone out and I get into my groove and then I wake up when I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> so. I have done that as well. I completely get it. It helps for sure. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And if you're not at least a little nervous, can you really say that you care? That's 100% true. 
100%. <laughs> so we just talked about all these other people that you've gotten to meet and I'm sure train with. But if you could train with one person that you haven't, be they alive or dead, we'll even open it up to, to those that have passed on. Who would you want to hang out with and work out Ooh. with? That's also a good question because I have so many favorites and so many, so many answers <laughs> for that one. I'm such an indecisive person sometimes. But well, you can pick a couple. <laughs> if I was going to choose probably now, because I'm sure my answer would change, let's say, like in a few months time or a few months time ago, too. Um, I would probably choose to train with the master of my current system or... Donnie Yen because he's just really cool. Like, <laughs> like, come on. Yeah. Donnie Yen is pretty awesome. I like envy yeah. his spear work. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I absolutely love that man. But one of those two would act probably on the top of my list. He's just I'm such like an advocate for like just like my dad. We're like the same. You know, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. We love to follow lineage, especially of like mm. what we're you know, currently practicing right now, and it's such like um, our specific style of kung fu is pretty, pretty rare. It's like um, it's a form of northern Shaolin, which is like um, Shaolin is like a name where it's like it's pretty known. It's not uncommon. People you say Shaolin, they kind of like have these little monks in their mind, and but it's like a, a form that's very concentrated to one area of China, and it's like not uh, not very practiced. Like besides. Um, um, our school down in Virginia, like, I personally have not met anyone that, to do our style yet. Like, we've seen videos online, of course, on YouTube, and we're like, oh, look at that's the form we know, blah, blah, blah. We just did that yesterday, you know? But we never, like, personally met somebody, like, at competition. As big as competitions can be, there are thousands of schools that show up to competitions. But it's hard to find the one that matches us. And that's what I, I love too. And it's like, we're such a rare school that that makes me want to promote the style even more, more people to know about it because it's such a beautiful art. I mean, in itself, the English translation, it like, it translates to glorious mountain. Like what's cooler. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. It is very beautiful style. So the lineage would definitely be a top. Of <laughs> so you mentioned Donnie Yen. Is he your, your favorite martial arts actor? <laughs> one of them. Yes, okay. most definitely. Who, who else is on your list? Um, hmm. Jackie Chan is up there too. Just, I mean, that seems like pretty generic, but he's just like I've done like so much research on him, and he's I've basically almost grew up with him in every movie, like whether it was like a comedic American movie or if it was like some super back road random martial arts movie that you can't even find like <laughs> anymore is is he generic or is he just that amazing probably just that amazing I, I, i'm gonna go for he's it pretty he's pretty incredible yeah, yeah. see he is like one of those he's like not only like a good actor now he i mean it takes some time for that skill to get up to <laughs> but he, he was always been true to his martial arts and that's what i envied so much is that no matter what he always had his martial arts and he knew that and that's what he promoted too and that's what i loved and then like i said before donnie yen and his spear work is some of the favorite <laughs> some of my favorites and he's actually from boston might i add so really yes yeah. i didn't know that oh yeah so mm. that's also a little bit of a ooh, massachusetts <laughs> yeah so definitely awesome. Have you had a chance to check out Into the Badlands? Oh, I'm currently watching it, actually. Doesn't he remind you of Donnie Yen? That's exactly I where it was going. You. Yep. I Can you. I literally cool. for, the, for those of you listening, if you haven't checked out Into the Badlands, um, anyone that does listen to the show often is probably sick of hearing me talk about it because <laughs> for six months I was really pumped up on this show and I'm glad that it's good. But there's a really strong Chinese influence in Daniel Wu's style, of course, and um, in, in, the, in the fight scenes. So yeah, when when you were saying <laughs> Don Yen, I was thinking Ip Man, and then my mind wandered. Oh, yes, so Ip Man is awesome. But if also, if you watch The Walking Dead, Into the Badlands happens to be after The Walking Dead, so you can just leave the channel on, just saying. So. It does. <laughs> and they, they did that on purpose. I'm a big Walking <laughs> Dead fan. has nothing to do with martial arts. But, but also a good show. Just completely but, different but it, course. <laughs> What a great show. And, uh, of course, they're bringing some staff work into there. Oh, yeah. But, you know, that's a, that's a whole detour <laughs> that 
probably, you know, like 12 people listening would be into us talking about that. <laughs> I'm sure you and I would have a good time with it. Oh, yeah. But That's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll leave that aside. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Absolutely. So we got Donnie Yen. We got Jackie Chan. How about your favorite martial arts movies? Ooh, so many. Like I said, I'm a very indecisive person, but there are some favorites that will always like, if someone asks me, like, come on, martial arts movie, give me one. I'll always say, like, Hero, if I don't know if you've ever seen it, but that's a big one on my list. Um, yeah. And Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. That That is always a great classic, and they're actually coming out with the second part sometime soon. Have you seen the trailer? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> so it just came out, what, today? Yesterday? Yesterday, I believe. Yesterday. So I woke up this morning and... and did some work and had to go out to an appointment. And as I, I got there, it was a couple minutes early, checked my phone and there was Master White, who was on the show uh, <laughs> a few weeks ago, texting me the link to the trailer saying, today just got awesome. And I was a couple minutes late going into my appointment because I had to finish watching it because it was that great. That's a completely justifiable reason. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure whoever was waiting must have understood. <laughs> well, to be fair, it was my acupuncturist. Oh, okay. Who, All right. So, I mean, <laughs> it's okay. That's cool. Uh, and of course, and Hero is a great movie. Jet Li is one of my favorite actors. Oh, I love Jet Li as well. Yeah, he's high up there on my list. Yep, and it's such good music. Like the soundtrack to that music to that movie is so good. <laughs> then I think the last one would probably be Ip Man. Ip Man is a crazy movie. The mm. third part's coming out sometime soon, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Great film, great choreography. Oh, yeah. There, there's three solid movies <laughs> that that you should all go listen to. I know It Man is on Netflix. Yeah. Um, I don't know about Hero. Crouching Tiger is not. But of course, over at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, I always post all of these links here. You can see everything that. that CJ LaChapelle and I are talking about and and I always do the research. Somebody does the research at least and gets it into the show notes for whether or not these movies are on Netflix. Oh, definitely. <laughs> They're worth your time. <laughs> How about books? Are you a reader? Oh, I love to read. I do. Just uh, recently with college, it's a little <laughs> more difficult to do like sure. my recreational reading, of course, but uh, I have read much more in the past. Martial arts books in general I haven't gotten into yet. Like I said, my time is very strictly yeah. managed, but just reading in general is a good pastime. And whenever I have the time to do it, I do. <laughs> good. Well, if you're ever looking for martial arts stuff to read, we've got dozens of episodes of people chiming in their suggestions over on the website. Oh, I would definitely check, check that out. Check out there what, <laughs> what people are saying. So here you are. You've You've risen pretty far at a pretty young age with your competition side. You've achieved rank. Now you're in college. I mean, there's a lot going on. So what are you working towards? What are your goals? I'd love to just continue martial arts for as long as I can. As simple as it sounds, that's pretty much my main goal because I've seen what it's done for myself. And to con continue with my personal training and to continue like teaching as well, possibly in the future, getting more into I do love to teach and I often am like this right hand man to my father, the instructor of the school, um, when it comes to uh, instructing like that. And I enjoy it and because I love to see what it does for other people. I would probably just love to continue that and continue promoting it. And whether it be in my own school in the future or in another school or in of our own, I would just love to keep promoting it and just telling stories and doing things like I am right now, you know, just giving the stories and what it's done and, you know, keep it high up there because martial arts is such a good thing <laughs> and it's very underappreciated. Yeah. So. Okay. Great. Great. Do you think you would ever open your own school? I think it's a, there's a good chance as long as, you know, the stars are aligned, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a, it is a feat and we're actually one of our senior students happens to be opening, like in the process of opening his own school right now. And wow, just like I, I'm pretty, I have a pretty close relationship with him and we often have conversations about like how he's handling it and it is a rough time, you know, and it's, mm -hmm. um, takes a lot of research, but I love, I'd love to have that as like, maybe not a full, as a full-time job because I have a, 
other plans for courses of my career for like something more full time, but definitely like on the side, I would love to continue teaching. But great, great. So, what what do you have going on? If if somebody wants to reach you, if somebody has a question, if somebody's in Worcester and they want to come train at your school, how how would they get a hold of you? Um, I'm a pretty uh pretty big social media person, so on anything like uh like Twitter. Uh, Facebook and uh, email as well is are, are good is pretty good. Um, my email and uh, I'll pretty much respond to anything like that, and I'll see it because you know, hey, teenage girl here, I'm <laughs> pretty much a social media <laughs> addict. I'm on always on it, checking things, responding to people, and uh, but hey, that's how we got in touch with each other, right? So it that's is all right. <laughs> right, yeah, can't can't knock can it. Be a can't good thing. knock it at all. Yeah. And of course, we'll we'll put those links over. Over on the website. Oh yeah, and you can um, always reach um, either maybe if they're someone's looking to train or anything, any other questions like that. You can even contact my instructor or my father, and uh, on my Kung Fu School's website as well. That's definitely always an option. Great, great. And just in case somebody doesn't make it over to the show notes, what's the address for that webpage? Um, I believe School. that is WorcesterKungFu.com. Okay. Or that's you, pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. Or if you want to get into like the main school page is Shaolin Kung Fu Centers dot com. So Okay. Great. And any parting advice for everybody listening? Um man, just keep training for you martial artists. And if you're not a martial artist, you should start training. <laughs> <laughs> but no matter how you feel, don't let you let anyone discard you from your own training or anything you do in life, really. And just keep going. You do you and you figure yourself out and martial arts is a big world and so just don't go in with closed eyes so there's always something new to learn and keep your eyes open and go in with an open mind don't let anything get you down (laughs) thanks for listening to episode 49 of whistlekick martial arts radio and thank you to cj la chapelle for her time Head on over to WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com for the show notes and everything we talked about today, including links to the actors and movies we discussed, contact information for CJ LaChapelle, and a great video clip of Donnie Yen and Jet Li, her two favorite actors, battling it out. Can you guess what movie it's from? If you want to be a guest on the show or you know someone that would be a great interview, please fill out the form on the website. And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter so you can stay up on everything we do. If you like the show, please subscribe or download one of the apps so you never miss out in the future. And if we could trouble you to leave us a kind review wherever you download your podcast, we'd appreciate it. Remember, if we read your review on the air, just contact us and we'll get you a free pack of Whistlekick stuff. If you want to follow us on social media, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram, all with the username Whistlekick. Remember the great stuff we make here, like our range of t-shirts, from comfortable to functional, over at Whistlekick.com. So, until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.